is an incredible day for sailing. We still pinch ourselves every day that we're actually able to sail and live this life full time. When we set off from England three years ago to sail around the world, you'd have thought that our biggest worry was storms or crossing oceans. But no, our biggest worry was could we actually afford to do it? We spent many nights fretting about whether or not our dream was really actually possible. The cost of an ocean going cruising boat and the equipment needed to fit it out are readily available online. But what we really struggled to find were the day-to-day -day running costs of living aboard a boat. So we decided that the only real way to find out how much it cost was pretty much to get out there and do it. If we had to stop and come home early, then so be it. Because we were so worried about the unknown costs, we got into the habit of tracking every penny that we spend. Yes, we've tracked every single penny that we've spent over the last three years, from the cost of a mooring to the loaf of bread that we buy. So we now have a spreadsheet with all of that information in. We meet and hear from a lot of people with boats who are hoping to go full-time sailing themselves. And one of the things that they always ask us is how much it costs us on a month-by-month -month basis. So in this video, we're going to explain how much it has cost us to sail halfway around the world over the last three years. If you talk to other cruisers about money, most of them will say that what you spend really depends on three main things. So that's where you sail, the boat that you sail, and your own attitude to spending money. So before we go into any figures, it's really important that you understand a bit more about us. Where we sail. The figures we're about to give are averaged out over the last three years, in which time we've sailed halfway around the world. We've been continually sailing since we left England. Our route has taken us down the beautiful coast of Atlantic Spain, to the port wine cellars of Portugal. We sailed out to the Madeira and the Canary Islands, then visited the fishing villages of Cape Verde off the coast of Africa. Next was 2,000 miles non-stop across the Atlantic, to jungle, turtles and carnival in the Southern Caribbean. From there we passed through the seventh wonder of the modern world, the Panama Canal, and into the mighty Pacific. A 33-day, 4,200 mile ocean passage then took us to French Polynesia and the Cook Islands. We stopped off to see the fire dancing in Samoa and explored the blowholes and underwater caves of Tonga. Before pausing for six months in New Zealand and hiking its stunning South Island. Having done all of that in two years, we slowed down in the beautiful islands of Fiji, Vanuatu and New Caledonia. The last eight months have been spent sailing the east coast of Australia with its awesome wildlife. What we sail. Florence is a 37 foot fiberglass cruising boat. She was built in 1985. Although she's not the most basic cruiser out there by a long way, she is towards the more basic end, which means she's cheaper to maintain. If you want to find out a little bit more about Florence, we did a video tour recently and you'll find the link in the description. Our attitude to spending money. Friends have been known to call us tight. We like to see value from the money that we spend. And the less we spend, the more time we get to live the life that we love. Who needs more incentive than that? We're not the most frugal cruisers out here, but we are towards the more frugal end of the scale. Hopefully by providing what we've spent over the last three years, we'll provide a baseline for anybody else going full-time sailing. Now that you know a little bit more about us, let's go into how much we've spent. Our expenditure each month fluctuates wildly depending on where we are and what we're doing. From just $75 for a month at sea crossing the Pacific, to $4,168 in New Zealand, travelling around, reprovisioning, maintaining Florence and our big insurance renewal. So what we're sharing here are the costs that have been averaged over the last three years. We've broken our costs down into nine main categories. That's food and drink, maintenance, insurance, excursions, cruising fees, mooring fees, communications, fuel and other. Food and drink. This makes up 26% of our total budget. That's $4,457 per year, or $85 per week. 
Food costs vary massively depending on the country we're in. From free gifts of coconut and papaya in Fiji and Vanuatu to 15 US dollars per cabbage in remote parts of French Polynesia. It really pays to do your research online and most of the information about food costs is available before you arrive in a country. As food is our biggest outgoing, we are able to save significant amounts of money by stocking up in better value areas and eating simply and locally in areas where food is imported and more expensive. The majority of our meals are eaten or at least prepared on board the boat. It's much easier to keep track of what needs using and minimise food waste and cost when you're cooking from scratch on a regular basis. We often take meals ashore, no matter what we're doing, whether we're hiking a hill or going into a city, unless we know for certain that food's really good value ashore. $4.50 for some chocolate. If fresh food is imported and $15 per cabbage, we just won't buy it. There have been many occasions where we have walked out of a shop without anything and returned to the boat to make something from our remaining dried stores. How much is a Jack Daniels? $85. $85. Alcohol is also included in this section. It's a very small percentage though, as we don't actually drink very much. We do enjoy the odd one though. But drinking regularly is something we sacrifice in order to live the life we love. Despite the fact that food has been consistently more expensive than when we were living in the UK, we do find that our general grocery shopping is the same cost as it was when we were living on land. And that's mainly due to the fact that we are bulk buying our food and also that we're eating less extravagantly than we used to when we lived on land. We anticipate that in the coming year, our food costs will reduce further as we move into Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand. This all sounds very boring, yet the fact is we still do treat ourselves and get great enjoyment from our food and drink. We are a long way from the rice and lentil diet that we anticipated before leaving. Maintenance. This makes up 19% of our budget, which is 3,192 US dollars per year. This section includes anything we spend on maintaining Florence including haul-out, parts and spares. So far we've spent a lot less on maintenance than we thought we would have to. There's a general figure in the industry of between 10 and 20% of the boat's value as what you're likely to need to spend. However, be aware that there are some very good reasons why we haven't had to spend as much. Florence was in very good condition before we set off. Nearly new sails, a new engine, new bimini, new solar panels, new complete electrical wiring and batteries and a whole host of other things that we had which are all not included in our day-to-day -day costs. They were done before we set off. We do all of the maintenance ourselves which saves us the labour cost on everything. It's amazing what we've had to learn, everything from engine maintenance to setting up a rig and doing rig checks ourselves. For the same amount of money as we paid for Florence, we could have bought a much bigger but less prepared boat. That boat, despite being the same initial cost, would now be costing us much more to maintain. A bigger boat means bigger winches, bigger sails, bigger engine. So all of that massively increases the cost. If you took the cost of all the things that were done to Florence before we left and added them up, averaged them over the three years we've been cruising, then our maintenance costs would be well up within that 10 to 20% bracket, probably fairly high. Um, and we do expect our maintenance costs to increase as we go around the world as the things that were new when we set off become more worn and require more maintenance. One large cost that has been difficult to dodge is the regular haul out to re anti foul and maintain the underwater parts of Florence. We've hauled out to re anti foul twice since we left England, and that's averaged over the three years in the figures here. Our biggest single maintenance items since setting off so far have been replacing our boom, which we broke crossing the Atlantic, which was 1,205 US dollars, including shipping to St Lucia, closely followed by our electric anchor windlass at 1,163 dollars. But after 12 months of hauling up our 20 kilogram anchor and 10 millimetre chain by hand, the windlass is worth its weight in gold. Other exciting maintenance costs include things like varnish, polish, anti-foul paint, engine spares, it just goes on. Insurance. This makes up 17% of our total overall budget and that's 2,987 US dollars per year. This section includes boat insurance for Florence and medical insurance for us. Boat insurance is very expensive. 
especially when you're going to travel to remote areas of the Pacific. And also it's expensive to get medical care when you're constantly travelling through the year. This is what we've got to show for 17% of our budget. Yep, nothing. But then we are really grateful for that, that we haven't had to make a claim. You don't have to have insurance, but we do choose to. Excursions. This makes up 10% of our total overall budget. That's $1,718 per year. This section includes everything we spend on land travel, such as bus fares and eating out. Um, no. We're really lucky that most of the things that we enjoy doing are free with the use of some basic equipment that we carry on board. Hiking to the top of any accessible hill. Diving into beautiful clear waters and snorkeling with amazing ocean life. Kayaking through secluded bays. Sailing our dinghy in stunning locations. And exploring further afield on our folding bikes. It's rare that we actually have to pay for an excursion that we can't lead ourselves. But sometimes we do, such as visiting a live volcano, Mount Yasur in Vanuatu. That was $114 each, but well worth it. Transport ashore is usually by foot, folding bike or public bus. Public bus is an experience in itself and normally very cheap. Occasionally it's not possible to get a bus to a special inland site and a car hire becomes our best option. We've hired a car for a day about three times per year on average, often sharing with friends and family or other cruisers to reduce the cost. Whilst we were in New Zealand, we actually bought a car, built a bed in the back and then sold it before we left, as it was the most cost effective way to get around. We sold it for only 200 US dollars, less than we bought it for. We include all the items we buy in the excursion section of our budget. Matt is particularly partial to an ice cream, so this makes up a fair amount of their expenditure. Can I get a double cone, please? Eating out doesn't really feature in our budget, but when we do, maybe once a year, possibly twice, this is where we include it. One big sacrifice we've made to keep our excursion costs down is not flying home to the UK to see our families. This is by far the hardest sacrifice we've made for our whole budget. Cruising fees. These make up 7% of our budget. That's 1,163 US dollars per year. This section includes cruising permits, visas, and any costs that we incur checking into a country. We get asked about cruising fees all of the time, but it really depends on your own nationality and the country that you're checking into. Some countries charge a thousand US dollars and some will let you in for free. The most expensive countries we've been to so far are Panama, where transiting the canal cost us $1,316 plus a $185 cruising fee. Australia was the second most expensive, where we paid $720 US for two nine-month visas and $266 US on biosecurity fees to allow us to bring Florence into the country. French Polynesia was free to check into as European citizens and New Zealand cost us only 25 US dollars to check in for six months. Information on charges is available on websites like Noonsight and government websites and research of those has allowed us to avoid places where we felt high checking fees were not justified. When we sailed from New Zealand to Fiji, we stopped for a couple of days in Minerva Reef to avoid arriving at a weekend. Other. This section makes up 7% of our budget. That's 1,120 US dollars per year. This is everything that doesn't fit into a specific category. Such as medical fees, cost of shoes, clothes, sunglasses, charts, pilot books, second-hand barbecue we bought, a whole variety of different things that won't fit in a particular category. Mooring fees. This makes up 6% of our overall budget. That's $1,020 per year. This includes marina fees, mooring fees and port dues. Marinas are really expensive and we prefer living at anchor. We have a good anchor and we keep a close eye on the weather. But marinas do make things like laundry, provisioning and collecting any guests much easier. So we tend to stay in a marina about 21 days on average per year. Other than when we went travelling in New Zealand for a month, we've never left Florence for any extended period of time where we've had to pay to leave her somewhere. And that's really reduced our mooring fees. 
Sometimes the charges don't make sense though. In Samoa, it was the same cost of $16.50 per night, no matter whether we were in a marina berth or anchored in the harbour outside. Communications. This makes up 5% of our total budget at $917 per year. We include here any mobile, internet and satellite phone costs. Modern communications are amazing. In the old days, yachts would have an SSB radio to get communications and their weather forecast. The modern equivalent for that is a sat phone. We have a very basic satellite phone plan. Ours costs 70 US dollars per month and it allows us to access weather files when we're at sea. It also acts as a safety device. If we have a problem, we can call home or call a doctor from anywhere in the world. We actually stopped the sat phone plan whilst we were in Australia and we did it whilst we were in New Zealand as well to save money when we've been in good mobile phone connection. On top of the satellite phone, we also use one mobile phone between us and we pick up a SIM card when we're in each country that we're in and we use that mobile then and that data to act as a Wi-Fi hotspot so we can access um, the internet via different devices on the boat. In most countries we visit, data costs on the mobile are cheaper than they are in the UK and it's generally more cost effective to pay for data on the phone rather than go and sit in an internet cafe even for uploading HD YouTube videos to our YouTube channel. Fuel. This makes up only 3% of our overall budget. $539 per year. And this includes not just diesel and petrol, but also propane cooking gas. This is a really short section. Florence is a sailing yacht and we like sailing. Fuel is our smallest expense. Unless we need to be somewhere on a particular date, we will happily drift along at two knots rather than turn on the engine. The engine is mainly used for coming into or out of anchorages. All of the power we need on Florence is generated through these 250 watt solar panels. So we don't need to use any fuel to run a generator or run our engine to charge our batteries. We have accumulated just 400 engine hours in over three years from England to Australia. Florence uses about two litres per hour when motoring. Unfortunately, the amount we have to motor is likely to increase when we reach the no-wind areas of Indonesia. As for the outboard engine for the dinghy, well, we rarely use that. We prefer to row or sail the dinghy around unless it's a really long way and it's really windy, in which case we might use the outboard. But we only use about 10 litres of outboard fuel per year. That's just two of these little cans. The cost of cooking gas varies massively from country to country, but we've never found it to be more expensive than in England. We have had to buy two new cylinders, both in the Canaries and in New Zealand, because we couldn't get our normal cylinders filled. We go through about four kilograms of cooking gas per month, but then we do drink quite a lot of tea. So what does it really cost to sail around the world? Well, we're halfway round, and overall it's cost us an average of 17,113 US dollars per year, or 8,557 per person per year. For our British friends, that's 13,434 pounds per year, or 6,719 pounds per person per year. The only thing we haven't included is the cost of the new camera equipment which we bought here in Australia. And that's because that was kindly paid for by donations from our patrons and donations on our written blog. Despite tracking every penny that we spend and holding ourselves to a pretty tight budget, we feel like our life is richer than ever. As cheesy as it sounds, we are spending less but living more. We do make a few sacrifices though to live the life that we love. Be aware that we don't film ourselves when we're lugging two weeks worth of groceries back to Florence on foot five kilometres because we don't want to pay for a taxi. We also don't show you many times when it's bad weather and Florence is rolling around wildly at anchor because we don't want to pay for a marina berth. There are many small sacrifices and hardships that we're really happy to go through to enable us to live this life on the budget that we have. There are people out here on smaller boats and on tighter budgets than us. And although life might not always be as comfortable for them, they've got the same view and they're collecting their own priceless memories. 
We hope the information we've provided here in this video will help anybody with the dream of sailing around the world to understand the costs of full-time sailing. Next time we blow the budget by sheltering from some bad weather in a marina and hiring a car to go inland in search of some duckbill platypus. Thank you to all of our patrons for your support, especially our star patrons, Bill McNamara and Kate and Peter Atkins. Please let us know in the comments section if you found this video interesting or useful. It's a little different to what we normally do.